And the Bible says in chapter one that a huge storm came. All the men on the boat started getting affected. So put a pencil there and just write down, watch the friends you hang with. <laughs> because there were some people on the boat that was going through hell because of Jonah. The sailors was like, somebody on this boat is cursed. Read, read the Bible. They was like, somebody on this boat is cursed because... Welcome each and every one of you here to Fuel Station Church. We are super excited to be able to connect with you on another powerful teaching. We are here in the city of Buffalo, New York, where the greatest people live and the greatest football team is. And, and we're going to win tomorrow again. All right. So we are so excited to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. We have some great, amazing people here in the sanctuary with us. And we have been on an awesome series entitled Pride the Root to All Your Frustrations. And now, um, who in here, since we've been in this series, has been seeing a lot of pride popping up in your life? I see two, both of my hands is good. So let's talk a little bit about this. Let me kind of share with you a little bit on um, where we've been at. Today is episode seven. All right. And so the thing about this is what blows my mind is every, and I do, I want everybody in here and those of you watching, I want everybody in here to take a moment, some time in your week, your day, and go through every book of the Bible. Just kind of skim over it if you, if you, if you want to speed read. And I promise you in every book, downfalls, every tragedy, it was a pride issue. Every story, you go see it. So this is where most of us, um, this is where I believe God has got us because I'm clear every time I'm alone with the Lord, I keep hearing, I am not going to move in the church until we remove pride. So we have a lot of all churches all over. We are gathering, we're singing, we're preaching, we're, we, we're doing activities, but we are doing it on top of a prideful heart. And God is sitting there watching us doing it, but he's not moving because the thing that he resists is inside us. We competing with each other. We got churches fighting each other <laughs> over doctrine and people. Uh, uh, he's seen better than me, so I ain't going to that church. Well, uh, this is all pride stuff that is separated. Now we got all these the denominations because of this pride issue. And remember, guys, the, Jesus number one prayer was that we will be one. One. Would y'all agree that he's doing a good job, the devil, by separating us? And we keep thinking the devil is after this. He's after my car. He's a, he. The, he really don't care about that. Long as y'all don't be one, he good. Long as the husband and wife can't be one, he good. Long as the 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 two people who's supposed to work together can't work to, can't be one, I'm good. Every time there's oneness, there's power in the oneness, and the devil knows that. So that's why his attack is always, I cannot let them agree because there's power with two or three gathered together, touching and agreeing. God is in that midst. But he knows that if I can keep them separate and the devil is like, well, how can I keep them separated? The only way I can get them separated is to let that pride in them come out. Because when that pride come out, they, they go always think their way is right. They're not going to be humble enough to listen to somebody else. So that means that they can't grow because they can't receive instruction. So you see what's happening. So now you have people who's been saved 30 years and they still chewing on milk. Notice I said chewing on milk. <laughs> we should be at stake by now. And we're still at milk stage because our pride has got us from receiving, growing, that type of thing. So we saw that uh, that that is the root. We saw that that is what kicked Lucifer out of heaven was pride. When he came here, he's like, listen, how can I get God's creation to disobey him? Let me open the pride door. So he goes to Eve and said, listen, if you 
eat of this tree, you will be as gods. Her pride door opened, and now all of a sudden the tree looks good. She started seeing that it was good for food. She started seeing that it was an attractive tree. So she then take it, and when the pride door opened, some other things started to happen. And we noticed that the first one was shame. We talked two weeks about shame. How, how many people feel ashamed of who they are? It, we are in a pandemic today. Do you know that shame in the emotional realm is one of the lowest frequencies that you can be emotionally? It's one of the lowest frequencies. That means there is not a frequency under shame that you can go under. When a person gets to shame, they, the next frequency is suicide. Hmm, that sounds like a lot of stuff we hear in today. That was the first thing that came out of shame. Then we realize after shame and shame is a result of you not showing your glory. You not walking in your assignment. You completely hiding the very you, you now covering your nakedness because you are ashamed of how you are. So God made you to be this. But oh, I don't want nobody. To, let me cover that part up. I'll show them who I'm not. So you got a lot of people comfortable on Facebook, Instagram, showing people who they ain't. So they don't show, so they nobody see who they really are. So when people get close to them, they push them away because I don't want you to see me. I'm covering my nakedness. The next door thing that come out of this pride door is fear. We started fear last week and we saw that the moment they heard the Lord's voice, they ran away, <laughs> hid themselves among trees. Here at one point, Brandon, they were so comfortable hearing from God. So comfortable listening to his, hearing his sound, his presence. And in the moment they let that pride door open, now they, the, the one transition says, and um, the, 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 the Lord, the presence of the Lord was walking in the cool of the day. And the, just his presence made them afraid that they ran from the very God that created them. Now they're hiding behind bushes and trees, <laughs> trying to hide from their creator. I know that ain't nobody in here. You know, you know it, it will look something like this today. You sleep in at two o'clock in the morning. Some, you wake up and, you, and, and your spirit says, just pray for a minute. Oh, I ain't about to pray. I'm going to get back in these covers. I'm not comfortable in your presence. I, I'm more comfortable under these covers. I'm more comfortable. So the covers become the trees. <laughs> because we, it, hey, I'm, I don't, because I, when I watch it, because I know if I, I know if I come to your presence, I have to give an account for what I just did. Because he was looking for them because of what they did. Remember that. So when God comes to us, he's always trying to help fix things so we can keep moving forward. But we keep pushing away from him. Like, oh, no, don't fix that, Lord. Look. That's our pride operating. That's us saying to our creator, I really don't need you. I'm good. I really don't need your help. And every person who operates that way, they always live frustrated every time. Get their hearts broken, the relationship, get their hearts, the money just be falling out their pocket. And they're like, why, why is my life going like this? Maybe it's because you're trying to live your life apart from God. That is, it could be as simple as that. You have been taking decisions without acknowledging him in all your ways. So now you're starting to feel the frustration the root of all your frustration. You're feeling frustration. So I always tell people, just think about the area that you're the most frustrated. And I, I promise you, just, just do a study. And you just keep pulling the layers. You'll be like, oh, look at that pride. There it is. I found it. You told me. You told me, Lord, to, to please don't. You told me, God, don't, don't go with these friends tonight. You told me. I remember you telling me. And I didn't listen. But didn't I, I told y'all the story about uh, when I made that bad investment some weeks ago. Did I tell y'all about that story? I can point, pinpoint the moment when I knew the Holy Spirit was telling me this is a bad investment. I can pinpoint that he did it three times. And the last one was so funny. <laughs> this was the funny one. The, the actual website that I had to transaction the money. Even that website told me, don't do it if you don't know the person. <laughs> and I still did it. What is wrong? And now nah, watch this. So when I got scammed, was it the devil? 
See, <laughs> y'all getting it now. That was my pride. I think I may know better than you, God, on this one. And I humbled myself. I was like, I, I knew it the moment I hit sin. I said, oh, Lord, I, I just I just blew. I just blew five hundred dollars. I knew it. I knew it. It was a feeling. You just know. I, I, and, and because he was because I understood about pride. Guess what? I just sucked it up and said I blew it. I ain't blame the devil. I, I didn't blame the person who scammed me. I, it ain't his fault. He's a scammer. Scammer, scam. <laughs> scammer supposed to scam you. That's what. So why get mad at a scammer when they scam you? Why get mad at a cheater if they cheat? The problem is you saw that there was a cheater and you just your pride said, I can fix this one. <laughs> he ain't going to cheat on this. Yeah, OK. <laughs> now, heart all bleeding. How did he do that to me? Well, he was a cheater. <laughs> so prideful people always try to fix stuff. So I admit it. I was prideful in that decision. Now, if as innocent as that was to me, I didn't know that was pride when I did it. I'm thinking, I'm, you know, maybe you got to take some risks. And I was like, but it was funny because he was showing me then. If you acknowledge me, I'll be in all your decisions, not just I'll even be in your investment. So he was trying to help me. Like, listen, I and the first one was saying the first time I felt something was when um, I gave them the number my number. And, you know, he, he kind of, the way he replied didn't feel right. That reply just didn't feel like good customer service. I'm like something, something don't feel good about this. I kept going because I, I wanted that product. I want, y'all know, hear, hear me. I wanted that product. I want to be as gods. I wanted that tree. And I went ahead. So that was checking after that first one. And then the second one, I'm just telling y'all my business. What's, what's wrong with me? Lord, help me, Jesus. Let me get to the word. I'm a good confession time. I'm a confession message. But I'm sharing this because I want you to see what pride look like. Because I think we think pride is walking around. Your, no, pride is some of our dumb decisions. And I'm just trying to use me so you can don't, don't feel bad. You know, like you got somebody in the group with you, you know, so it happened to me. But I'm just showing you how sneaky it is that sometimes God, he's really trying to help us not to operate with this door open. So we we noticed that um, uh, the next the next thing was fear. So tonight. And ju I'm just going to take a few minutes and just show you how that fear one, which we were using last week, I was giving you all these scriptures about God did not give you the spirit of fear. I will show you how last week, how that when they begin to hide themselves amongst trees, they were running from the they were running from the presence of God. And we were showing you last week that fear is when you are attracted to darkness. Y'all remember that? So when you are attracted to dark things, that comes from a place of fear. You can't have dark and light in the same thing. And, and this is why every time again, through the Bible, you're going to say you're going to hear this. These terms light, dark, light, dark. The double operate where the, in the fear realm, God operate in the love light realm. So first John talks about, he says, there is no fear in love. You can't even have fear over here. So if you get this, fear has to remove itself. And when fear remove itself, guess what else removes itself? The attraction to darkness. And I can name a bunch of things that falls under to under. So a lot of people are doing these things, all these killings, shootings, these addictions. They are all falling under a umbrella called fear. Because when our pride is open, I can do this without God. They are pr pretty much what when people are going to these substances to try to feel better or whatever. What they are doing is they are going to trees just like Adam and Eve did in Genesis. They're walking away from God's presence and they're trying to now cover it behind trees. Literal trees. <laughs> the kind you put in your mouth trees. <laughs> it's true because over here I can get some comfort. That that those these addictions is where I get my and I'm telling you every addiction you want to if you want to break the addictions, take that, take whatever you're struggling with and bring it over to the light. Boom. And fear and that thing will go. 
because it can't be over here. Now, you guys all heard about the story of Jonah, right? When you hear of Jonah, what's the first thing that comes in your mind? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's, it's true. Most people, when they think of Jonah, they think, isn't it funny? Nobody, when you talk about Jonah, nobody talk about his success. <laughs> we go right to his frustration. Now, let's just walk, let's just see this fear principle. Let me go to the book of Jonah. I know some of y'all are like, okay. Let me go to my concordance and find this. I don't even know where to draw that. Jonah is in the Old Testament. All right. I just got to show you these three scriptures because it is, you're going to see this whole fear thing that we saw in Genesis. So, if you know, those who got the phone on your Bible, I know you go find it faster than, uh, than most people. But um, it's in the Old Testament. It's after the book of Amos before Micah. And I know you're like, well, where's Amos? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, where's Mike? No, I'm kidding. But, but <laughs> so, so watch this. Let's go to chapter one. Let me show you this. This is, this is amazing. So I, so while you're looking for Jonah chapter one, I'm just telling you, if, if, if anytime you see frustration, destruction, yeah, that one word pride is like, and all of these other things, again, comes from that door. So look at, look at verse one of Jonah chapter one. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, verse two, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse three. <laughs> now, now, verse three is going to look just like what y'all saw in Genesis last week. Look at this. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, completely the opposite direction, from the presence of who? Oh, it, didn't, didn't Adam and Eve run from the presence of the Lord in Genesis chapter 3? <laughs> you see what happened when you get afraid? He was afraid of the commandment. And immediately he ran away from the presence of the Lord. God will say to Jerome, Jerome, I, I want you to be a pastor. Jerome was like, all right, I'm going to Cleveland. I'm about to open me up, but I ain't about to pass. I, immediately the fear of being a pastor is going to make him run. You see what happened? Which is connected to pride, which means I ain't doing what you're saying. You don't know what you're talking about. You picked the wrong guy. That's pride. That's telling him he made a bad choice. Now he's afraid, so he's going to run from the things of God so he don't pastor. Is this making sense? So you see, now he goes spend a, a lot of his life away from the presence of the Lord. 80% lived breathing sleeping apart from the presence of the Lord. Can you see how many people today who is not in their assignment, <laughs> they're living behind trees and them trees can't do nothing for you. Jonah is a perfect example. Jonah pretty much says, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. It says he went from the presence of the Lord, look at this, and went down to Joppa. Notice it said he went down. <laughs> when pride kick in, you always going south. Went down to Joppa, and look at this, y'all. <laughs> and he found a ship going to, to Tarshish, so he paid the fare. Which, listen, look at that. He paid money to run away from God. He was like, listen, I'm going to pay for this sin. I'm going to pay to be disobedient. <laughs> fear will make you pay for, for darkness. Oh, I have mercy. This may get too deep. So watch this. And went down, and he went and went with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And now we go talk about the wonderful stories y'all have been hearing. Now you go, now, so chapter two is funny because I'm gonna give y'all, I want everybody here, y'all Bible students tonight, go home and read, it's, it's the quickest four chapters you will read in the whole Bible. Chapter one is what we just read, right? God says, hey, Jonah, I need you to do something for me. I need you to go to Nineveh <laughs> and I need you to just speak for me because they can't see me, but I need, they got some wickedness there and I need you as a prophet to go and do this. And Jonah was like, first of all, his pride kicked him, but his fear opened his head and said, mm -mm, some people are crazy. And so, just so y'all know, Nineveh was like, um, do y'all remember back in the day? I don't know how many of y'all remember, but y'all remember the fruit belt back in the day? Those who, who maybe, that was, but back in the day, fruit belt was not a place you want to walk past. You, you go in there with sneakers and you come out with socks. Socks only. It was not a nice area to live in. 
it was the hood. Hood, hood on steroids back in like the 80s and the 90s, early, but it was not a good place. There's a lot of neighborhoods like that here. It was so bad in Nineveh, the people would, in the public streets, and if you look, read the history, in the public streets, they would rape women, they would kill babies, they would do all this stuff in the public streets, and the people would crowd around it and be watching. It would be, it was, it was like a, hey, this is cool, hey, come on guys, yeah, oh, hey, yeah, hey, good, hey, they're, they're, beating, they're beating this little baby up over there, everybody just come over and watch. Now y'all can understand why Jonah was like, I ain't going. Y'all understand now, because <laughs> now y'all starting to relate. Y'all like, you know what? I would have ran too. <laughs> so watch this. So fear is kicking in. He runs from the presence of the Lord. And now we go to the story that everybody like. He gets on the boat. Jonah's just like many of us. He gets on the boat and now he's down under the, 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 under the boat sleeping like, I got away from that. My pride got me away from that. But the only problem is God was like, I love Jonah. I love him so much. But since this pride is operating, he don't have my protection. And the Bible says in chapter one that a huge storm came. All the men on the boat started getting affected. So put a pencil there and just write down, watch the friends you hang with. <laughs> because there were some people on the boat that was going through hell because of Jonah. The sailors was like, somebody on this boat is cursed. Read, read the Bible. They was like, somebody on this boat is cursed because this wind is about to kill us all. And so they began to start casting lots. They were praying to their guys, what is going on? We're about to die. And Jonah down there knocked out. And them men said, where'd I do that? They go downstairs and say, wake up. What is, who is you? Why is all this happening? Oh, it, um, th my name is Jonah and I'm running from the Lord. And so that, please don't tell people you're running from the Lord. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> so, because <laughs> the result of him saying that, they was like, okay, um, we need to kick you off. They in the middle of the sea <laughs> and they was like, since you came and became one of my friends, I've had shootings at my house. <laughs> my kids are tormented. Stuff is stuff keep missing out my house and nobody's saying I stole it. Ever since you started being my friend. Maybe you just got became friends with a person who is running from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and your house getting affected now. They kicked Jonah off. Them men was wise enough to say, listen, we ain't about to suffer. And they threw Jonah off and the scripture says, and the storm stopped. So the moment you get rid of that crazy relationship, all of a sudden, peace comes back. <laughs> so watch this. Now, this is a funny part of the story. So now Jonah is in the ocean. Now we get to chapter two, the story that everybody here know. Now the, the scripture says, and the Lord appointed a fish. Isn't that funny? He appointed a fish, meaning the fish was pretty much used by the Lord. He, the fish was called before the foundation of the earth <laughs> to swallow this man. God was like, I got the right circumstance to humble you. God gives grace to the humble. But look at God's love. God says, Jonah, I love you so much that I want to give you grace, but I can't do it with your pride. So let me humble you so I can bless you. So he humbles him in the fish's belly. That's in chapter two. Now Jonah is inside of a fish praying. Well, isn't it funny how we start praying when we in fishes? I'm just kidding. Um, uh, but <laughs> it's always when we in the fish, we want to pray. He in there talking about, oh, Lord, mighty God. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> the one who made the universe. Oh, you oh, now you want to. It's easy to pray like that when you are surrounded by seaweed and, and, other, <laughs> and, and all this, you know, smelly. And, jo and Jonah humbled himself. Now watch this. Because he humbled himself, like James chapter 4, God extended grace. And God said, okay, you humbled yourself. And all of a sudden, the fish said, oh, my stomach getting sick. So the fish spit Jonah out <laughs> because he humbled himself. So Jonah get another chance. 
We should all should clap for Jonah. Let's clap for Jonah. Y'all hey, should look at your faces. Y'all like, <laughs> this is not a clappable story. So he's now on the ocean. He's now on the beach with all this fish throw up. But he's humble and he got grace. That's the love of God. <laughs> now, God is so funny. We would have thought that God would have said, OK, he had enough. Let the man go back home. God, after the after Jonah get on the beach, God said, um, <clears throat> can you go back to Nineveh? He went right back to chapter one. <laughs> he didn't say, OK, OK, I'll get. He said, no, you're the guy I want it and you're the guy I'm going to keep coming after. Even after you acted a fool, I still want you. I still want you. I still want you. And the humble would say, yes, Lord. I'm tired of operating in fear because fear lands me in fish's bellies. <laughs> fear always land me getting thrown off ships, swallowed by fish. Smelling like they're up. Then Jonah says he was humble enough and Jonah went. Now we move to chapter three. He goes to, into the he goes to the hood, Jerome. Them folks out there partying, rolling dice, selling drugs, smoking weed. They doing everything. And Jonah walked up and said, Jonah walked up and said, God is going to destroy this land in 40 days. Now watch this. Everybody in Nineveh was prideful. That is actually why God wanted to destroy it. Because <laughs> God hates pride. That's why we got to pray for the United States. Because if we become a prideful nation, God is going to say, I have resist this country. And then all of a sudden you start seeing mass shootings and what's wrong with our country? We need to stop. We need to march down the street. No marches go stop the curse. Because if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble, not march. <laughs> it's a humility problem we got. We don't want to acknowledge that we took you out of schools. We don't we, we, we don't want your Bible and nowhere in our houses, our hotels. But we want you to bless us. In our country, and God says, go ahead, America, do what y'all do. And you see what's happening. More abortions, more killings, more suicides, more than any nation. And we sit there talking about, we're in a pandemic. We, the only thing we got to do is Second Chronicles chapter 7. Humble ourselves and pray. Humble ourselves and admit we messed up. We took God out. Watching If you are watching and you do not know who Jesus Christ is, I am here to encourage you to please make that decision while you have time. It's not too late. Jesus loves you so much and a lot of frustrations you may have been going through in your life could be because he has been trying to get your attention because he loves you. You're probably in the, in the belly of a fish right now. You probably got been thrown off of a ship and you're like, what's going on in my life? It's probably because God is coming after you and he wants you so bad because he has a plan for your life. So if this is you and you wanna make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'm just gonna ask you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Lord, I repent of all the pride that's in my heart. That pride that says, I don't need you. That pride that says, I don't, I can do this without you. Lord, today I humble myself and I acknowledge that I need a savior. And I ask you to come into my heart today. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Deliver me from the attraction to darkness so I can serve you. I confess with my mouth and believe uh, believe with my heart that you are the Son of God and that you have died for my sins. Be my Lord and Savior today. In Jesus' name, amen. If that is you, we are here rejoicing here at Fuel Station. You have made the best decision of your life. So we love you so much. We thank you for taking time with us and we pray that today's teaching was such a good blessing to you. In Jesus' name.